This week we got a brand new coverage put into the game, and that's with how Cover 4 Quarters plays Trips Formations, otherwise known as Solo or Poach. To be fair, this was in the game a few, a few years ago when Match Quarters was first put in, but it was plagued with too many bugs and was eventually just taken out completely. Now it's back and better than ever, and I think it is something you should definitely consider using in your defense. Especially if you're running the Cover 4 Cross setup that I posted recently, this will be a fantastic counterpart. Mixed in with Palms, Cover 6 and 9, which have also been slightly tuned as well, and we'll get into that at the end of the video. And you have yourself a nice little quarters toolbox to play with. So this one addition makes all of the other quarters checks better just by the fact that we can cycle between them all and avoid getting specific setups and beaters run against us because although it is very very similar, the same kind of family of coverages, they all have minor little differences that make it really hard to key in on things. So, you know, there's no unbeatable coverage, right? You can't just go out and try to find the one best coverage and, and use only that. What matters is the system that you have and having more tools to your disposal, allowing you to be adaptable and unpredictable, which will generally give you more success. More success. Now, the patch notes say that this was only added for next gen, but it was actually also added for current gen, which is what I'll be showing here. So there may be some differences here and there, but I can imagine, uh, at least logically speaking, uh, they will be the same uh, in terms of locomotion and maybe something that I missed because I don't have next gen yet, um, they should really be all the same. So just for simplicity here, I'll be going 4-3 normal cover 4 quarters, but this applies to all cover 4 quarters as well, of course. And we will just be going in a simple trip set right here, gun tray open offset, starting with, of course, 4 verticals. Every defense has to be able to defend 4 verticals first, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So we've had cover four quarters and cover four palms in the game for a few years now and against pretty standard two by two sets, those are really well defined. Um, there's no really playing around there. The rules are kind of set uh, and they've been you know, pretty much the same since they've been implemented. But when you, as soon as you motion receiver over or not even motion, if you just have a receiver over there to create this one by three look, uh, then you can't really just run palms or quarters because it just doesn't make sense because the safeties relate to number two uh, and on the weak side you have no two right the two is in the backfield uh, and then on the strong side you also have a three that could potentially go vertical so you have to mix things up a little bit and there's a number of different ways you can do that uh, for the most part the most consistent trips check in this game has been special which is in cover four palms and then for cover four quarters at least for the last couple of years has just uh, defaulted off to spot drop coverage uh, so that's obviously not something you want uh, if, you, if you are running a match coverage you don't want it you know you don't want the offense to dictate whether you're spot dropping or running match coverage so now within this patch we finally have it back and what it is is it's known as solo uh, or poach and there's um, a few, uh, I wouldn't say subtle differences, there's actually quite a few big differences between this and special, and if you forget what special is, I'll kind of compare the two throughout the video. But when you're dealing with match quarters, uh, it's essentially, uh, most of the time, it's a split field coverage, meaning that the defense on this side of the ball is more or less independent of the defense on the other side of the ball. So you can kind of call one look to the to one side and one look to another side or they can be same so say for a two by two you can say pick quarters to both sides or you can say cover six which will play uh you know quarters on one side and a um you know a matching cover two on the other side and, and multiple different things that are actually even more expansive than what we have currently in the game uh reality speaking this one in particular is kind of funny and actually before i get into that uh, the other note for split field coverages is that you usually have one extra defender on each side. So on this side we have three defenders over two, so you can think of this as a triangle coverage. And then on the strong side you have four over three, so these guys right here, and you can think of it as a box coverage. And although you know sometimes you have some overlap in terms of uh, 
you know, usually, you know, one side you'll have one defender free that doesn't have to match. This side you'll have one another defender free that you don't have to match. And if you have crossers, usually that free zone defender is able to help out uh, and bracket some of those routes. Uh, so that's nice. But solo and poach is a little bit different in that you're bringing over one of the guys from the weak side, which is the weak safety here, and he's now helping out on the strong side. So you essentially have man to man on the back end, and although it's not an actual term, I like to call it kind of a pentagon coverage, where now you have five guys over three on this side, uh, just to help you over there um, be a little bit more solid there. So you can kind of, you know, I wouldn't say special is any worse or better than solo or poach, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it's what's really great is now you have the option. And they look the same, uh, they have this quarters look, but they play quite a bit different in a lot of different areas. So you can switch between the two of those, and then you can also switch in uh, the cover four cross kind of stupid coverage that, that I put in the, the last couple of videos uh, where you had you know a spot dropping cloud flats from the corners, and, and then these safeties are able to clean up anything that goes deep. Uh, so you still have that. I mean, that's against these spread looks, you, you wouldn't really do that. That defense is more so for compressed looks. But what's great is that if if you have your spot, if you have your zone drop set, and your opponent comes in a spread look like this, you can still call your play, and then you would just simply reset it at uh, at the start of the play, and it would go back to the matching rules. And I believe that solo and poach, uh, and then still special are are really solid coverages still. Uh, so that's just that, and we can get into the rules now. So the rules specifically, we'll start on the weak side. We're not really going to talk about the the weak side too much. Uh, isn't too much excitement going on there. So this corner, and let me just reset this. This corner is man to man on the solo right receiver right here, anywhere he goes. So vertical, underneath, hitch, whatever he do, does, he's man to man. If you want and you have some time in your adjustments, you can manually man him up. I think the animations are a little bit better, and plus, if you have one step ahead there, uh, he'll actually kick in. So if you want, you can definitely do that. Uh, the Will linebacker here is playing a quarter flat. Um, in, in this case, what that means is that he's essentially man-to-man -man on the running back, uh, except in a, in a few rare cases, you don't really need to worry about it. He will swap with the mic here, the three rec, but you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, and then if he, if the black stays in the block, then he'll just play the flat right here. Um, okay, so pretty simple. Man to man on the back. If the back stays in the block, he will pick up any of these shallow crossers coming from the strong side. Uh, and then the three receiver hook is relating to number three, so he'll match number three coming underneath. So usually what that means is that this flat defender, quote unquote, is usually busy with the running back and will have to carry him on a wheel or something like that, meaning that there is no flat defender. So any cr shallow crossers, the three rec will have to pick up. So he will initially, you know, if, if number three runs vertical, he'll initially wall him off for the first five yards or so uh, before coming back down to cover any of those um, those shallow crossers from three. So three can be either literally the three receiver or if some of these other guys cross underneath, then they become the new number three. And this programming in this in this coverage is smart enough to know that and pick up whoever is coming across. You, a lot of times that'll be your user. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, if you're using like a traditional Madden user, you're kind of in the middle of the field. Uh, but you need to know that what your assignment is that if, if the back is out, you're not going to have a flat defender over there and you will have to carry shallow crossers. Or potentially you could just put a dumb zone over there uh, to cover that so you don't have to worry about that. But we're, we're not really going over how to run this coverage and the best ways to run this coverage because it is still pretty new and I want to dig into it. But we're just going over what it means and uh, the basics of it. So let's reset again. Now, where things get really interesting is are essentially your defensive backs. Um, so you have your your strong corner, your strong safety, your weak safety, and your uh, your Sam, your nickel right here. So uh, let's go with the simplest one of them all is this strong corner 
who's playing a mod technique. So he's man on number one only if number one goes deep. But if he runs, you know, a hitch or a shallow cross or a slant, uh, he's going to let that go, and likely uh, one of these underneath guys will pick him up going that way. But you know, if he runs streak or post, comeback, anything like that, he's got him man to man. Okay. So next we go to the strong flat defender right here. So his responsibility is essentially first to the flat. So if three goes to the flat, he takes them. Two goes to the flat, he takes them. If one runs a hitch, he takes him. So first guy to the flat, he takes him. Um, or he will relate to number two going underneath. So if you get something like, if you don't have anything going to the flat and two runs a shallow cross or one runs a shallow cross, he'll actually match him across the field and we'll get into that shortly. And if he has nothing to do, I've noticed he actually does a really, really good job of getting busy, and we'll go into a few examples. Uh, he is going to be a really, really interesting player for you. And why this coverage is actually good, um, another reason why this coverage is good is that uh, if you are playing out of base formations, like a 3-4 or a 4-3, which I actually do, um, and I'll probably get into that in another video, but this guy will be a linebacker and not a safety. And although in Ultimate Team you can get some pretty fast linebackers, uh, he won't have the speed to match up with wide receivers going vertical. So if you're running cover four special, his responsibility is to cover number two deep. So if that's Tyreek Hill and you have a linebacker, you can see you have issues there. But in this case, he's never going to be covering deep, uh, except in one specific case, but that's nothing to worry about, and we'll get into that later. Uh, he's essentially in this kind of area, and he's kind of crazy and unpredictable, and he should theoretically make some good plays for you. Then uh, we have the strong safety right here. So he will, so in special, he actually relates to number three vertical, but in solo, he's relating to number two vertical. So Thielen right here. If he doesn't go vertical, uh, technically uh, or ideally, his job should be to double number one. And he sometimes does that. Uh, it's not really consistent. Uh, and then sometimes he'll actually get involved with number three, which I'm not a huge fan of, but by and large, you can just consider him uh, to cover number two if he goes vertical. If he doesn't, he'll you know find some work in this deep area. He's kind of weird, but he's he's safe. There's I don't see any big bugs with this coverage so far, like we've seen in previous years. And then the last guy is the weak safety. Uh, he's taking number three vertical. So if number three runs a streak, he's got him. If he's running a crosser or a post, he's got him. If number three runs a corner, uh, the coverage is smart enough to let him go and, and go to the free defender in this area. Okay, so that is the basics of the rules. And now let's get into a few examples of it uh, after I just reset this. Okay, so let's go with the most simple of all, four verticals right here. We'll let it play out a bit, and then we will show you the replay. So like I said, right over here, the weak guy's got uh, the wide receiver man-to-man. -man. I mean, it's just a fade, so even if it wasn't match, you'd probably have him. Uh, the will linebackers man-to-man -man on the back. I don't like, like he takes, he drops quite a bit before matching um, which I, I feel like isn't the same with special the back side of it but so what what that means is that a lot of times he's actually late to match him and I, I think there's probably good ways around that I mean obviously you could just man him up if you expect the back to release and he will get some better animations um, yeah I, I don't like how slow he is to match in some cases but I mean, if he's running something like the flat or a wheel route, you'll be totally fine. And just with some of these interior routes, he will get caught up a little bit. Uh, the mic, or the three receiver hook, he walls off number three, and then he really has nothing to do. He kind of helps out a little bit, not really. Um, yeah. Actually, in this case, I know I was talking about how good the Sam does, but in some cases, he kind of freezes although he, he really should ha come down and help out on this crosser. But these are just kind of nitpicky things. Uh, by and large, uh, the logic is sound. 
So again, you know, this isn't special, so the SAM doesn't need to carry two verticals, but he will actually redirect them, so just slow him down a little bit, which is nice. And then the safety will pick him up and match him wherever he goes vertically. And on this, on this side as well, just the vertical, the corn is going to take him man to man. Now let's go with some of this underneath logic and show you how these zones or these def these underneath defenders pass off different shallow crossing routes. Uh, it's pretty good for the most part. So if we have something like this where uh, the back releases and he pushes the wheel out because the will out because he needs to match him and we run three shallow but that's the three receiver hooks job and he actually does a really nice job of converting on that to the point where that's just not something that you can throw now if the running backs into block let's do the exact same thing but the running backs into block so now the three rec is smart enough to know that there's a free flat defender over there so he will match him temporarily and then pass him off to the wheel right there, so then you'll still be covered, plus you have a free defender in the middle. So really quite smart. Now, what about, we, we still keep number three on the vertical here, but we run two underneath. So now the two becomes the new number three, and we'll show you that the logic is sound, but the coverage is a little bit not so great. So you see in the end, the three rec does match, but he's just late on that. So if you are a user in that defender, you'll obviously do a much, much better job, or uh, if you're using him, like I was saying before, and you don't really want to cover anybody to the flat, uh, you always have a free defender that you can just put over there to make sure that <laughs> for sure uh, you've got things covered. Uh, in which case, if you have the flat defender there, then you can probably manually man up the wheel. But, you know, these are just little adjustments that you can make. There's so many different ones you can make. Uh, I'll probably go into a more of a deep dive later on. Now, what's cool is let's run two underneath bring out the back. So in this case, uh, again, you know, the will has to release with the back, the, the three rec or the mic is matching three underneath. And then you'll think, well, what about if I, I bring another guy underneath like number two, but what's great is that you have this strong quarter flat, which relates to number two, and he will also match him really, really well. Nice. Okay, let's start to mess around with some vertical routes right here. So staying four verticals, but what we'll do is, and let me just take the back out. Uh, we are going to put number three on a corner route. So again, the safety in the corner have these guys vertical. And although I was saying before that the weak safety has three vertical, if he's going to the outside, obviously, he will never get there to be able to, to make a play on that. Even if you kick him into the middle of the field, he's just not in a position to do so. But that Sam defender is smart enough to reroute his guy and then pick up that corner over there. Oops, I got a, a block. But yeah, so he, he's smart enough to know that uh, you know nobody's matching that guy, so he's going to match him, and then he's going to make a play on that ball, which is really, really nice. Whereas if you're running cover four special, which is in cover four palms, and we run that exact same thing, that Sam defender needs to carry, needs to match number two all the way up the field, and the strong safety is man-to-man -man on that tight end, uh, and usually he'll just get really badly beat uh, because he's, he's got a bit of an inside leverage and he doesn't really stand a chance. Then we can look at... Uh, the same thing, but putting two on a corner route. Now, these aren't really super realistic uh, route combinations, but still interesting to kind of look into. Um, he will uh, he will work underneath that corner route from number two as well. So what you end up having is kind of a bracket right here where the, the SAM will reroute number two, and you'll still get the match from the safety because that's his man, but usually the safety's not that great at... <laughs> covering man-to-man -man space like that uh, so he will also you know tend to lose but again what I was saying is this guy gets really really busy and he's able to drift underneath that and make a play on that so it's really really tough and even if there's a deeper corner and you try to throw it you know over the top that's when you'll, your safety is going to come into play so you have a nice bracket logic there now if I were to run this combination again with cover four palms or special that safety won't be in the mix because he will be taking number three vertical and so you're really meant you're really one-on-one -on -one in the slot right here uh in which case i think you're, the guy does actually pretty well in this case but you know not as well now perhaps a more 
uh, realistic uh, route combination with number two going to run a corner route is smash. So the best way I can do that is just put number one on a smoke screen. And what I'll do is I'll actually put number three straight up up the field on a vertical route. And we'll go ahead and show you how uh, the route combination takes place. Actually, what we'll do is we'll show it with palms or special first. So with special, the safety will take number three vertical, the Sam will take the corner, and the strong corner is man-to-man -man on number one, even if he runs a smoke screen right here. So then, if you lose on the corner route, which in this case he doesn't, but if you lose, it can be a touchdown. But if we run the exact same thing, but in solo, you'll see that the you know there's a built-in smash check just by the rules here. So the the Sam or the, or the quarter flat will go down to the flat and the corner will be smart enough to take over on the corner route and make a play on that ball. So two very similar coverages but play it quite a bit differently. Then uh, you know I showed you know the smash combination right here but over here again the safety is relating to number two so in the end he matches the corner as well. You know, in case you, I don't know if you playmaker him up or something, he's there to help out. And then on the back side here, again, your weak safety is there to cover number three vertical. Now he's really kind of out of place right here, so you may want to consider maybe moving him in a little bit. But you know, against these, uh, you know, detached number threes, uh, solo or poach isn't probably the best look uh, to do, just because you have so much ground to cover with this guy. So if this is not a tight end and if it's a wide receiver, you know, maybe uh, consider running a different coverage or again, you can just move him inside, which might kind of tip things off, but I don't think anybody playing you will, will uh, know what's going on there. Okay, let's keep moving with some of these examples. Let's go to Y corner right here. Uh, this is a route combination that is, that special really struggles against because uh, the underneath guys uh, in the corner are out of the play and then if your your corner route beats the safety uh, it's usually a touchdown so right here if you rack catch that and if it's somebody faster than Kelsey it's likely a touchdown but if we are running this out of again if we're running this out of solo you do have help because uh, the corner can pass off number one and then he can help out on that corner route again uh, just as I showed you with smash he's gonna be able to help on those corner routes Okay, so number three is going outside vertical, so the weak safety doesn't care about him. Uh, number one is going underneath, so the corner leaves him, and he sinks to help out on that, and he does a really, really good job of getting in good position. Uh, the number two becomes the number three, so the three wreck will come down on him. Uh, the will, of course, had the halfback. Sometimes you get kind of a cluster there, but the logic is sound. Uh, and then the number one becomes the new number two, and so the quarter flat will actually match him. Uh, if I didn't throw the ball so early, he'd match him across the field. So really, really nice and tight coverage. And I think, uh, you know, it really is a good mix up uh, with the cover four cross stuff where, you know, you are running spot drop zone coverage, and you're covering those crossing routes and corner routes and things like that, but it's still a loose zone coverage. So you can find little pockets here and there uh, but when you switch it up with the same look but almost a completely different coverage, uh, now you have these little gray areas uh, that are uh, much, much tighter throws to fit it into. So if you mix the two up, I think it can be really, really good for you. So now let's go into some other combinations that you know are, are well played logically, but um, you know struggle a little bit here and there. So what if we do, same thing before where we have a vertical for number one and a corner from number two. And we saw before how well the Sam plays that, but what if we have a flat from three? So we have a sail combination right here. Well now, that corner is gonna be one-on-one -on -one with the safety and then uh, you can make them pay for that. So again, I was, I was saying, you know, ultimately the flat defender is taking the first guy to the flat. So if he doesn't have anybody to the flat, he can help out on those corners, but if he does, then he's gonna come down on that, and then you are one-on-one -on -one with the corner route and the strong safety right there. Now, logically, it's sound, everybody's picked up. It's just that you know he has this strong inside leverage and it's a safety covering a wide receiver, so uh, usually if, if your opponent really knows uh, what's coming there, 
uh, he'll be able to throw that corner route. Now, if it is a late read, that safety is going to come there and make a play for you. Then we can look at inverted sail, where number three is running the corner route. And this is actually kind of a cool situation uh, for the most part. Sometimes it can get a little bit buggy, but if you're not if you're not using the three rec, he's he's pretty smart. Like <laughs> maybe you might even want to consider using the um, the weak safety, uh, rushing with the the D line, or even just using uh, an eighth defender and just letting everybody do their thing, and then you can kind of <laughs> freelance within that. Um, but but what will happen is that he will be smart enough to pick up that corner route. And he actually does a pretty good job of sticking with that tight end. So if you want to user him, you'll want to think about those same rules. So you are relating to three unless until somebody is running underneath. Nobody's running underneath, so you will go with the corner route. If you don't, he's going to be wide open. So you definitely got to do that. Um, again, you know, first to flat, vertical, everything is sound. And if three runs a post or a cross, then you can let him go to the weak safety right here. Okay, FL dig. Uh, these deep dig routes are covered really well by that corner. Obviously the hitch is going to be taken by the, the slot defender and the the seam route, uh, or you know that bender route from number three is going to be taken by the weak safety. And that strong safety should help out on the dig, but even if he doesn't, um, you know, you're solid across the board. So right here, number three is taken vertically. The hitch is taken here and the dig gets covered well, but if you have a, a really good pass lead uh, and if you don't have any knockout abilities, uh, he can likely catch that. But if you're using the three rack, likely you're not gonna be down here. You're gonna be underneath that uh, to pick that off. Where you will start to see this strong safety get busy, uh, bracketing number one is when number one is running a post route. So right here, very similar combination, except this isn't a deep dig, this is a post. You have a flat or a hitch, whatever you want here, and then a uh, shallow right here, which will be taken by the mic. And so the strong safety has nothing technically to do, but in some cases, again, he does a good job of actually matching and bracketing number one, so you can't get those big deep posts over the top because now he's double covered with a good positioning. And the very last coverage, or the very last route combination that we'll go over is switch. Uh, this is another case where that strong safety will get uh, we'll get a bracket or a, or a rob number one. Um, so what we'll do is kind of same thing. We'll run just three number underneath and we have a switch from one to two. I'm going to block the back so he doesn't go strong. One thing to note is that still, if the running back is strong, it will check the spot drop zone coverage and, and none of it will match. Uh, but right here, you'll see the slot defender actually takes the guy vertically. But even if he's too slow, you do have the safety to double on that new number one. So again, what ends up happening, uh, first to flat, you know, this guy, you know, the, the slot defender here doesn't know it's a wheel route. It looks like a flat route, so he's matching him and he's got to turn up field and he actually does a good job. Plus you have the safety coming over the top, uh, coming over the top late to cap that off. The post route is covered usually pretty well. Uh, even if he wins there, he's going right into this weak safety here who's free. So that's nice. And then over here, uh, let's see how this turns out. You have the three running underneath uh, with nobody to the flat, so you know he can pick him up. Looks like the weak corner got burnt pretty badly right here from this kind of speed dig. Um, but you know, if you're a user three rec, you'll come right underneath that to pick that off. Or uh, what I'd actually suggest is running press coverage. You know, if he's off coverage, it's really hard to cover that stuff. Uh, or like I was saying, you know, you can just manually man him up, and if you have one step ahead. Uh, that will work really, really well. Okay, so that's cover four solo or cover four poach. Uh, with that, a couple of changes or cleanups to these cover six and cover nine as well. Uh, now it looks like across the board that cover six will play special automatically. Uh, I think they were kind of going between spot drop and special, but now it's it looks like it's special. So, uh, you know, number two vertical is with the quarter flat, um, except if number three goes underneath, then the quarter flat will take them and the safety will take over. But what that means is you're running four over three right here. You can't play poach obviously because the backside is playing the deep half over here relating to number one or number two over here if they go vertical. 
So again, you know, if we're running four verticals right here, these guys will go. And then, you know, you still, because it is quarters, you do still have that overlap on the other side. Then I'll cover nine. Cover nine still has some weird things going on here, but you will have the help over here from this weak safety. So even though you don't have a middle third defender, uh, he will come over and make sure that you're sound in the middle of the field right there. So that's a nice little addition as well. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to say. Uh, actually, one thing I forgot to say uh, is these crossing routes, uh, the weak safety doesn't actually do a great job of matching. A lot of times he'll actually just, oops, I'm in the wrong coverage, but he'll actually transition late. Now, I don't know how this looks in next gen, but in current gen, he does transition late. So even though he logically, uh, you know, covers number three going across the field, he's a little bit late and he will end up trailing him. Now, I'm sure there's a way around that, whether it's through abilities or initial alignment or certain buggy adjustments, uh, which we'll probably get into later. But for now, keep in mind, even though he covers those crossers, he's not super, super good at it, uh, at least for current gen. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I hope you guys like this kind of breakdown. That's always exciting to me when these new coverages come. I don't really see too many other guys talking about it. So uh, if you appreciate it, definitely leave a like. Uh, leave some comments below. If there's anything confusing, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, that's it for this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.